Good morning. Welcome to this week. Cause for alarm. There is a worldwide alert. We have breaking details this morning on that terror threat. New concerns about that risk to the homeland. Plus the fresh intelligence that has officials so spooked and so convinced Al-Qaeda may be poised to strike. Then, our exclusive interview with the president's top military advisor. Will Edward Snowden's secrets end up in enemy hands? And the man at the center of the domestic spying debate, Glenn Greenwald, reveals his brand new report here, live. Plus, so I'm gonna let the people decide. Anthony Weiner, not going anywhere. A Republican family feud takes off. Washington politicians only care about bringing home the bacon. This is the king of bacon talking about bacon. And the Russian Olympics on thin ice? All that ahead this Sunday morning. From ABC News, this week with George Stephanopoulos starts now. Good morning. I'm Martha Raddatz. George has the morning off. It's great to have you with us. And we begin with breaking news as more than 20 embassies and consulates are closing around the world right now. And here at home, increased security measures are now in place. ABC News has learned this morning that the intercepted communications that led to the alert indicate terrorists are planning an attack that is going to be big and, quote, strategically significant. Yesterday, the White House held an hours-long meeting, high-level meeting, with the country's top national security officials to discuss the response to the threat. And we've just learned what went on at that meeting. So let's go straight to John Carl, who is at the White House. And John, it sounds like the national security community is really spooked by this. No doubt about that, Martha. The high-level meetings here at the White House over the weekend are a sign of just how seriously the U.S. is taking this threat. In fact, officials tell us they believe that there are al-Qaeda operatives already in place for this attack in Yemen and possibly in other countries as well. The cause for concern are those intercepted communications from the leadership of the al-Qaeda affiliate in Yemen. One U.S. official telling us, quote, the part that is alarming is the confidence they showed while communicating and the air of certainty about their plans. The official tells us they even talked about their media plan for after the attacks take place. Now, one of the things that is especially concerning about the Al-Qaeda affiliate in Yemen is that they have developed techniques to evade Western security measures. Specifically, officials are concerned about terrorists carrying surgically implanted bombs. As one U.S. official told us, quote, these are guys who have developed the techniques to defeat our detection methods. John, people I've talked to said they don't really know exactly what the target is, even if even if it's an embassy or consulate. What do you know about that? Th that is exactly right. They've closed those embassies and consulates, uh, Martha, because they are strategically significant and would fit that description. But there is no guarantee that this would be an embassy or a consulate. As a U.S. official told us, we do not know whether they mean an embassy, an air base, an aircraft, or trains. Now, we saw last year that with the attack on the consulate in Benghazi, the diplomatic outposts are a possible target. But Martha, there is no guarantee this time around that the target list is confined to embassies or consulates. Very frightening, John, and thank you to you. And while the NSA helped uncover this latest terror threat, there are also new revelations this morning in the controversy over its secret surveillance programs. Glenn Greenwald, the columnist for The Guardian newspaper, has been at the center of all of this, breaking the story with his interview with Edward Snowden, and he joins us now from Brazil. Good morning, Glenn. You're reporting there are new frustrations, frustrations in Congress about being thwarted in attempts to exercise oversight. What does that mean, and who's stopping them? Members of, of Congress, members from both political parties actually came to us and showed us all kinds of letters and emails that they've been exchanging in which they're trying to get the most basic information about what the NSA is doing and spying on American citizens and what the FISA court has been doing in terms of declaring some of this illegal, some of it legal. Remember, we keep hearing that there's all kinds of robust oversight by Congress, and we need not worry. And yet these members of Congress, one of whom is Morgan Griffith, the Republican from Virginia, the other Alan Grayson, the Democrat from Florida, showed us, and we're publishing this morning, very detailed letters trying to get this information, and they're being blocked from getting it. And they've said, and other members have said, that they are forced to learn about what the NSA is doing from what they're reading and are reporting. 
And, and when you say they are being blocked, how are they being blocked? People are refusing to give it to them in Congress? Correct. I think the most amazing thing, one of the most amazing things in this whole episode, Martha, is that there is a 2011 opinion, 86 pages long, from the FISA court that ruled that much of what the NSA is doing with spying on American citizens is both unconstitutional in violation of the Fourth Amendment and illegal, a violation of the statute. This opinion remains a complete secret. The FISA court has said they have no objection to having it released, but the Obama administration insists it has to be secret. Both members of Congress and others have been requesting simply to read that court opinion and the intelligence committee that is led in the house by mike rogers and and dutch ruppersberger who who represents the nsa district receives all kinds of cash from the defense and intelligence agencies industries have refused to allow them access that's extraordinary to have a court opinion ruling that our government violated the constitution and the law and not only can't we read it but neither can our representatives in congress edward snowden do you think there's any way he'd ever accept a deal to come back to the united states well, I think the, the concern is, is that whistleblowers in the United States have become the number one public enemy of the United States government, which is incredibly disturbing. Uh, McClatchy has been reporting great things about how the Obama administration equates whistleblowing with treason, with all kinds of programs. The New York Times has as well. So unless that culture, which investigative journalists in the United States have been warning about for several years now, changes fundamentally, he doesn't believe he can get a fair trial. Whistleblowers in the United States are put into prison for decades and basically disappeared, as we just saw with Bradley Manning. And until that happens, I don't think that he would be willing to come back. He's instead going to exercise his well-established right to seek asylum from political persecution. Okay, Glenn, thanks very much for joining us this morning.